Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by part two, the Voron 2.4 upgrade video. Today we're going to be going over the gantry rebuild, including the beefy front idlers, the pin modded XY joints, and the pin modded AB motor mounts. We're also going to be installing the GE5C Z blocks, a servo powered nozzle brush, 5015 stepper driver cooling fan, a badger tractor, CAN bus support cable, as well as a smart filament sensor. Now, before adding any of these upgrades, I want to hop over to the computer and run an input shaper as well as a belt shaper calibration test so that we have a baseline that we can compare to once all of these upgrades have been added to the machine. As mentioned, we're going to start by getting a baseline reading by running an input shaper as well as a belt shaper calibration. With those saved and set aside, we can get going on the build. I always like to remove the panels from the printer and set them aside to keep the workspace clear while working on it. I decided to start with the easiest of the mods, so I measured and cut the Stealth Profile cable covers and began filling the extrusions in the bottom of the printer. The Stealth Burner hot end fan has been rattling for a while, so I made sure to set it aside so that I could replace it during reassembly. I'll also be replacing the AliExpress secondary drive gears in my Clockwork 2 with official BMG ones. A lot of the hardware on this printed tap will also be transferred over to the new CNC one. These belts have just over a thousand hours on them, but there's no sign of wear, damage, or stretching, so I'm going to be reusing them. Next up, I disconnected everything from the Z-chain that was connected to the AB motor mount. With the gantry zip tied in place, I was able to get going on the Z belts, followed by the Z joints and blocks. I then gracefully removed the gantry so that I can get going on the disassembly process. Started by removing the X beam, followed by the four remaining belt clamps. With those out of the way, I could then start removing all the bolts that were holding the AB motor mounts as well as the front idlers in place. While disassembling the XY joints, I noticed that the bearings were still in excellent condition, so I did not replace them at this time, even after 1200 hours of use. One thing of note is that I'm currently also replacing all M5 nuts in the gantry with nylocks. With the XY joints now reassembled and pin modded, I can put them back on the X beam. The beefy front idlers were also easy to assemble, each requiring two M5 bolts, M5 nuts, the original bearing stacks, and a small M5 pin that snapped into place in the carrier. The motors and bearings then needed to be recuperated from the old AB motor mounts. With the bearing stacks back in place and the new AB motor mounts assembled and bolted to the motors in the correct orientation, I could get ready to start reassembling the gantry. I started the reassembly with the AB motor mounts. Followed by the Y extrusions. And finally, the beefy front idlers. The XY joints and the X beam were then reattached to the rest of the gantry.
The Z-belts, belt clamps, and GE5C Z-joints were then attached to the bottom four corners of the gantry to prepare it for reinstallation. I then started the disassembly of the old Z-idlers to recover the toothed idlers required for the BZI, also assembling the BZI in the process, followed by installing the BZI using the stock hardware. Secured the gantry in place with a series of zip ties to assist in reinstalling it. The GE5C Z joints were then reattached to all four corners. All four Z belts were then routed through the Z drives back up to the BZI and down to the top clamps on the gantry. I spent the next half an hour fiddling with the AB belts, ensuring that they were routed correctly and seated in all of the bearings and pulleys. It was at this point I realized that I wasn't going to be able to use the CNC tap as it was missing the metal belt clamps and the plastic ones were too thick to allow for proper operation. Jumping back over to the work area where I reassembled the plastic tap. and proceeded to install it. With the plastic tap reinstalled, the tool head was ready to go back on, but before doing so, I wanted to replace the hot end cooling fan. The secondary drive gears in the Clockwork 2 also needs to be replaced with official BMG ones. Thankfully, the arm that carries them only requires one bolt to pop it out. The Z-chain was then reattached, the motors reconnected, and the umbilical cable secured. The tool head could then be reassembled, starting with the Clockwork 2, the hot end, reconnecting all the cables for the tap, the heater cartridge, and the thermistor, and finally, the stealth burner faceplate. The PCB door was then shut and the CAN bus cable secured in place. The X gantry backer was then installed correctly. The gantry was then moved to the correct position for belt tensioning. With all six belts now tensioned appropriately, we were ready to fire the printer back up for the first time since the rebuild. I homed the printer, ran a quad gantry level, and then ran a probe accuracy to ensure the tap was working as it should, and it yielded a standard deviation of 0 0.0008. In the electronics bay, I connected the wire that's going to run to the servo and installed the 5015 stepper driver cooler. The cooler is connected to the heater bed, so when the bed is on, they run, and when the bed is off, they shut down. With the wire for the servo brush already connected to the octopus board, all that was left to do was install the T-nuts and bolt it to the rear extrusion. I then copied everything over from the git into the files as instructed, ensuring to include it in my printer.cfg and adding the correct pin to the section relevant to the servo. We could then extend or retract the arm, as well as call out the clean nozzle macro. With everything working as configured so far, we were ready to reinstall the back panel. The rear cable management channels then went on for the wires from the exhaust and smart filament sensor to run through. After copying over the configuration from the Bigtree Tech manual, let's make sure the smart filament sensor works. Nice. With everything good to go, we can put the panels back on. We can now run the post-upgrade input shaper and belt shaper calibration tests. 
The belt shaper baseline had a 93% similarity. Baseline Y accelerations were 3,500 on MCV. Baseline X accelerations were 6,700 on MZV. And now for the real question, was it worth it? I got the belts as close to baseline as possible. The Y graph is still clean. We're still on MZV and we've gained 300 acceleration. The X graph is spectacular and we've gained a whopping 2,600 XL on MZV. And here we have all the parts that came out, the belt clamps, the XY joints, the AB motor mounts, the old Z idlers, the old front idlers, the old Z blocks and joints, as well as the threaded PTFE support arm that came out for the smart filament sensor. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get the SSR heatsink to work. It wouldn't fit on the DIN rails correctly, and there was no way of securing it. It was also a little bit too tall. As mentioned earlier, I couldn't get the CNC tap to work either as it's missing the holes for the belts to loop back, requiring belt clamps, uh, but the plastic ones wouldn't fit um, without interfering with the magnets. Now, Steph from Old Guy Melts Plastic was kind enough to donate these when I reached out, and he also donated the correct bolts for mounting the GE5C as I'm currently using socket head caps. If you haven't already, be sure to go check out his channel as he has great Voron related and 3D printing related content. The doors were also interfering with the beefy front idler, so I had to reprint the hinges with the 8mm variant rather than the 5mm. Unfortunately, the corner cable covers also interfered with the two M5 bolts on the BZI, so they had to be removed. I also didn't have any M5 by 30 socket head cap screws, so the sink gears couldn't go onto the BFI either. I plan on doing that in my next video. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who viewed the last video and subscribed. I'm almost at 100 subscribers and over 3,000 views in just a week since making the channel. I plan on making more content in the coming weeks. There's going to be a performance upgrade video as well as a new printer build vlog. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help grow the channel, and we'll catch you in the next one.